Hi everyone and welcome back to the zombies. Act 4 only has a story mission for us, the bat signal. In terms of preparation you really want to take a punch 3 legendary weapon with you. As usual the easiest way to obtain one is to buy it off the wall in the red zone. Do a few contracts, accumulate 5 grand and drive around the red in your LTV from one wall buy to another until you see a suitable gun. You want an AR or LMG for this with AR being preferred. Luckily, there's nearly always an MCW, SVA or a holder somewhere up for sale. You also want pretty much all the perks, or at least a set of Juggernaut, Speed Caller, Stamina Up, Quick Revive and PhD Flopper. On top of that, take 3 or 4 extra self revives and fill the rest of your inventory with sentry guns. You'll probably spend most of the regular run getting all that needed stuff, but it's ok, you can travel to the mission location even when it's fully covered in gas. Once ready, go to the portal at the mission marker. It's always in the same place, right by the huge black tornado in F6 quadrant, really hard to miss. When you interact with the portal, you need to open the map and vote yes to initiate the travel, if in the squad, the majority of the squad needs to vote for the travel to start. After a bit of loading, you'll find yourself in the dark ether version of Albagra Fortress. Those who played in Almazra will find it very familiar. Your mission objective will request you to break the seals and four mission markers will appear on the map. This can be done in absolutely any order, but I prefer to go from left to right, mostly due to the habit built while running later versions of the Dark Ether. So let's go left and run over to the ammo depot building. Zombies in Dark Ether respawn constantly, so there's no point trying to fight them all. Just keep moving to your selected objective, engaging only when necessary. When playing with the squad, there's no point splitting up four different seals, you can only do one at a time. Once there, interact with the pillar at the mission marker to start the first seal. You'll notice that a greenish toxic smoke circle appears around the inner yard. You now need to kill zombies within that circle to release their souls until enough are accumulated to break the seal. Apart from regular zombies, this seal attracts a lot of mimics and occasionally other special zombies too. After enough souls are collected, the seal breaks, revealing a pedestal. You can see an item, a pill bottle, hovering briefly over the pedestal before flying up and disappearing in the sky. This is a hint for further endgame content that comes after you beat the bad signal mission. Now let's make our way to the next seal. The path doesn't matter at all, I'm just trying to fight as few enemies as I can, but it's totally up to you how to get there. The next pillar I'm going to is the fire one, and it tends to be the most intense and hectic of all four. Don't forget to constantly replay and move to collect more plates, as you'll be hit from all sides pretty much constantly. This seal is mostly a place for manglers, though occasional disciple or two can pop up as well. Once the seal is broken, a burning dog collar will appear on the pedestal and also take off into the sky.
The next hill is really up close in the center of the fortress and tends to be the quietest of all. It doesn't seem to favor any particular type of special zombies, so expect manglers and disciples to come and even an occasional mimic. As before, activate the seal and keep collecting the souls, this time within a frost circle. It shouldn't take long. Once the seal is broken, a diary appears on the pedestal, but instead of flying into the sky, it disappears in place. That's because other items are traveling back into the normal world, but this one stays here in Dark Ether. Off to the last seal, the electric one. This seal attracts disciples mainly and tends to be almost as hectic as the fire one. Again, keep moving, collect plates as they drop and keep replating as you rack up the needed kills. Keep your eye on the zombies there as it's super easy to be killing them outside the circle and they don't count, so be patient about that. Disciples, of course, can and should be killed wherever they are. Eventually the seal breaks, revealing a surveillance camera on the pedestal before it flies off and disappears. Your objective will now say leave the Dark Ether, but by now you probably already know that's a lie. A final boss fight awaits before you can actually leave. Now, as we walk to the mission marker, let's talk about the strategy. There's three basic ways to take the fight tied to the location where you want to be. The beach, the toilet and the ledge. Doing the beach solo is a suicide. You need to be either very good at the game or very lucky to pull it off, so I won't cover that at all. Of the remaining two, I prefer the ledge one by far. I did that more than a dozen times, it's very consistent and safe, but a lot of people prefer the toilet strut since it can potentially be faster, so I'll start with that just to show how it can go horribly wrong very quickly.
So here we are at the place, the green bus, the toilet and a portal on the beach. As you get close to the portal, the Gorgant emerges from the ground. Immediately turn around and go back up the hill. Pivot to the toilet building as that's the only cover that's available to you. The orbs that are probably familiar to you from Act 3 Warm will be there immediately and they got upgraded to be even a bigger menace. They hit hard and keep on you non-stop so killing them is a priority at all times. Once you dealt with those and with zombies in the immediate vicinity you can wrap around the building and start hitting the worm as usually he'll be somewhere on the beach. This time though he decided to pop right next to the toilet making it really hard to both hit him and avoid his attacks. And this is a problem I have with the toilet strat. Sometimes you get lucky and the worm spends the whole fight in the convenient location on the far side of the beach opening his vulnerable parts to you at convenient angles. Other times he decides to stick around at point blank range with non-stop laser attacks and orbs harassing you without a pause. As with the Act 3 Worm, laser attacks will destroy any plates in your armor immediately. And if you have none, an instant down. If the worm hits you from below the ground, he'll bounce you high up if you have any plates and swallow you if you don't. If you are bounced up, for whatever reason you can't open the parachute unless you have automatic opening enabled in the settings, so mind that. If you're swallowed, keep shooting non-stop and keep spamming your jump button, otherwise you won't have a chance to open the parachute when he eventually spits you out, resulting in the immediate down. The hammering attack when he hits you with a hand and stomps you into the ground is an instant down and 
You want to revive really quick from it since it's sometimes followed by the swallow attack immediately, resulting in a full death from fall damage. Now I think that's enough of the demonstration on why I don't like fighting the Gormand at the toilet, so screw that, let's go to the ledge. From the toilet area, run up the hill to the fortress wall and use a zipline to go up. Immediately on your right is wooden scaffolding forming a ledge that faces the beach. That's the place you want to be on. The orbs will still harass you and will have to be dealt with, and zombies will occasionally come to bring you some plates and ammo, but the main thing is the worm cannot attack you here at all, so you don't need to worry about the laser, the stomping or being eaten alive. You also have a good shooting position at the worm wherever he emerges. It's not always ideal in terms of vulnerable parts exposure, but it's always good enough. As the worm burrows, and he does tend to do that quite often, shoot his trail when he's roughly in the middle of the beach to make him re-emerge. When he comes from the sea directly towards you, that's almost 100% hit to get him out, while when he gets along the shoreline from side to side, it almost never works. Whenever you see a purple vortex forming on the surface, shoot that. This is his healing routine and he can heal irritatingly fast. Shooting it breaks the healing and gets him to re-emerge again. Eventually, you'll run low on ammo. Drop off the ledge onto the road and place a sentry gun there. The damage sentries do is not huge, but they do distract the worm enough for you to get ammo refill from the beach most of the time, and sometimes even manage to break the healing cycle without your intervention. So, every time you go for ammo, leave a sentry on the road, it does help. Once you got the ammo, rush back up the hill onto your ledge position and carry on. While on the ledge, you may also notice that the intensity of orb attacks has decreased significantly. That's another benefit of the location, as orbs often get stuck under the ledge and will often stay there. You'll still get them from time to time, but much less than when you are in the open. That's basically your loop. Hit the bastard as long as you have ammo, drop a sentry on the road as you go for a refill, refill, get back. Break the healing cycle whenever he tries that, call him out from the barrel when in the middle of the beach. If you're doing that in a squad, a pattern is exactly the same. Communicate with your teammates as you go for ammo so that refills happen in order, while others cover potential healing routine.
As was with the Act 3 warm, after about 50% mark, warm's health seems to diminish at faster pace, and that accelerates even further after 20% mark. If the worm manages to heal quite a bit, don't panic, just keep grinding away at him and he'll eventually go down. Once that happens, the worm literally explodes, producing a spectacular shower of guts and flesh. The reward rift will have a locked diary in it, the one that disappeared from the frost pedestal. Pick it up and keep it safe in your stash, you'll need the item later along with three others and if you lose this, you'll have to do the whole fight again. The death spot will also have some loot, including essence, a golden skull, usually a kill streak, and almost always a wonder weapon case, including VR11. Until we have a schematic for it, this is actually one of the few reliable ways to farm VR11 in zombies. When all goodies are collected, I usually go and kill a harvester orb that flies around the far end of the beach, since killing it in the dark ether has a high chance of legendary tool drop. Like, really high chance, legendary or at least epic. But it's still just a chance though, so sometimes I'm just not that lucky. When you're all done, interact with the portal and you'll immediately exfil. Congratulations, you now finished Act 4 and are ready for the actual endgame content. Hope this was helpful, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.